Hello, municipal and local government leaders from all across Canada. I'm Darren Hill, a councillor for the City of Saskatoon, where I proudly served my community for the last 14 years. And I'm also your current FCM third vice president. I want to thank you again for putting your faith in me when you elected me as your FCM third vice president in Quebec City last year. More importantly, thank you for your friendship and for being there for what was the most difficult year of my life. My family's journey is now different than what I had thought it would be. But what remains constant and unwavering is my passion about my work for you and your community. FCM is a family. We stand together to support each other. Thank you for standing with me and my family. I'm passionate about my work as an FCM table officer and proud of what's been accomplished. I know there's still a great deal to do ahead of us. There's no doubt that the coming term will continue to include significant challenges, including new challenges that we've never faced before. I've been around the FCM committee and board table since 2007, and during this past year as the third vice president, the pandemic has reaffirmed my commitment to each of you that FCM is always mindful of the diversity of Canada's communities while still managing the needs of all its members. We know that every issue brought forward may not be relevant to every member municipality of FCM. However, that does not make the issue any less relevant or any less important. It is the job of the board, supported by the work of the table officers, to always keep these differences in mind and ensure that we're working on behalf of all our members, no matter if they're urban, rural, large or small. I've always known that FCM was flexible and could move mountains if required. COVID-19 has proven this. COVID has proven that FCM is flexible to react quickly and jump into action for all of its members. I want to continue to face those challenges with the entire FCM team on your behalf. In Quebec City last year, I gave two candidate speeches. In the first one, I focused on my experience and why I first ran for council. Let me share part of that with you again. I get asked regularly why I first ran for council. It's a pretty common question. I think that most of us have been asked at some point I'd like to stand here and tell you that I did it because I want to build better lives. That, that wouldn't be the truth. I ran because I was pissed off. <laughs> my, so instead of complaining, I decided to do something. I ran and I won. Then, then I immediately fell in love with the job. From fixing a drainage issue for an 83-year-old constituent to building a $300 million river crossing, I fell in love with doing my best to make better lives. Your reason for running for council is personal to you. It's your reason. But what we do share is our commitment to our communities. And you have demonstrated that commitment through your steadfast leadership the past six months since COVID hit. There was no manual on how to deal with the pandemic. There was no online webinar on how to keep your community safe during COVID. We couldn't Google what is the best community response to a pandemic? Trust me, I tried. And there certainly wasn't a YouTube video to help us navigate the wear a mask, don't wear a mask debate. We were facing a pandemic that had the potential to cause great harm to many members of our community. We didn't back down. We faced it head on. We learned as we went along and our guiding point was always do what is best for our community. Each and every one of us did precisely that made decisions for our community. And we did so with things rapidly changing around us, often changing by the minute and sometimes changing by mere seconds. It wasn't easy. I heard this from every corner of the country. You told me it wasn't easy on the phone, by email, on Twitter and Facebook, through text and messenger. You said the challenges were immense and the decisions were difficult. But we each put our community first and navigated it through uncharted territory to where we are today. Many of you did this while facing other challenges. While you dealt with the pandemic, you fought floods, fires, tornadoes, and more. And in Nova Scotia, you dealt with the unimaginable horror of a mass shooting across many communities. The pandemic didn't pause. You pushed through. You had to because you knew your community needed you. To my friend Tom Taggart and the many other municipal leaders from Nova Scotia that helped their communities through those days, 
and continue to help their communities. Thank you. These words don't seem like enough, but, but thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart and from the hearts of an entire nation. Municipal leaders are the closest to the people. That's why we care so much. Our work to keep our communities safe from the pandemic, it's not done, nowhere near it. There's so much more to do and there's so much still unknown. I want to continue working for you and with you to get us through this pandemic. A little bit about me. I mostly work from home the last six months and I've looked out onto my front street every day. So I'm not sure if I need to change the way my desk faces, but I'm starting to think that I'm like one of the great big hundred year old elm trees on my street. I have deep rural roots that have kept me grounded and provided a foundation to build my family and my work on. I've developed urban branches that continuously expand with every new thing experienced. And the rural roots and urban branches continuously work together to keep me upright and growing. I was raised on a farm in the rural municipality 376 in Saskatchewan. You know, as time passed, so did the status of my hometown of Sunningdale. It's not a town anymore, it's not a village, and it's not a hamlet. My hometown is now part of a municipal district. The store, hotel, service station, pool hall are all long gone. The school was shuttered in 2007. There are currently 25 people living there, but it is still a community. There are families being raised in and around the area. There are entrepreneurial ventures scattered through the region. And there's a tremendous amount of agricultural activity going on. Grain to cattle and everything in between. This community is helping feed the world. My hometown of Sunningdale and the RM of 376 are just as important to Canada as any city or town. Just like each and every one of your communities is just as important to Canada. Every member municipality is just as important as any other. That's what creates the fabric of FCM. And it's our greatest strength, the diversity of our members. That diversity doesn't divide us, it brings us together. And as a result, we are stronger together. Our communities can be found right across the country, from coast to coast to coast. And because of this, at FCM, we've always known what the pandemic is now teaching the entire world. We're stronger together, even when apart. I want to continue my work as your table officer by advancing to FCM's second vice president. I humbly ask for your vote and your support. Stay safe, stay strong, and hug the ones you love. No matter where my boots take me Oh yeah, and in closing, that 83-year-old with the drainage issue that I mentioned in my speech in Quebec City last year, she's now 97. She doesn't live in her single-family home anymore, but she still calls me once a week just to check in and to let me know what her thoughts are on about what's going on in Saskatoon. It's calls like that that remind me and reaffirm that I am helping to build better lives.